In this video, we're going to discuss how to linearize a system of equations. We previously linearized just the temperature equation by itself, but here we have the full rayleigh bernard boussin esque set of equations. So we have variables u, u being evolved, we have variable temperature t being evolved, and we have our continuity equation that di the divergence of u is equal to zero. So how do we linearize this set of systems? Well, we, um, we linearize it in the same way that we linearize the temperature equation. Namely, we start by taking our u and defining it into a decomposition, a u0 plus a u1. Remember, the u1 is of x and t, and the u0, if of anything, is of a, maybe of just a single coordinate z. We define a u of a u0 and a u1. We define a t of a t0 and t1, just as before. And then lastly, we'll define ourselves a pomega, a reduced pressure, a pomega, pomega0, and pomega1. Now, we're going to do the same process as before of substituting these into the equations and getting a, a set of linear equations. Before we do that, though, let's note that um, typically we're interested in systems where there are no large-scale flows. Um, we're interested in, say, a wave solution in a, in, a, in a static atmosphere, or we're interested maybe in something like convection and instability in an evolved flow. Um, so for, for the analysis I'm going to do right now, I'm going to set that u0 is 0. So u is only in the fluctuations, only in the fluctuations. Now, in our linearization analysis, we're going to assume that quantities um, with a subscript of 1 are order epsilon, um, and we're going to assume that the epsilon is much, much less than 1 again. This is This is... The, the key part of the actual linearization approximation, the decomposition into a 0 and a 1, that's fully general, but our, our power comes from making an approximation that the fluctuations are small, that they're order epsilon. All right, so if we, if we, take, our, um, if we take our system here, Let's start writing down our order one balance equations and then our order epsilon equations and our order epsilon squared terms. So our order one system here for the system of equations. So we start with our, um, our hydrostatic equilibrium and our hydrostatic equilibrium tells us, moving everything over to the, um, to the right hand, to the same side, that minus the gradient of pomega zero plus alpha g t zero in the z hat direction gradient pomega this is all equal to zero so this is hydrostatic balance within these rayleigh bernard equations okay what other order one equations do we have well, we have an order one equation from the temperature equation. And our order one equation there is that chi del squared T zero is zero. And this is effectively the thermal equilibrium, thermal equilibrium equation, um, telling us the, the profile of the large scale temperature gradients. All right, so there's our order one balance. What are our order epsilon equations? Our order epsilon equations in this system look like this. Our order epsilon equations are our momentum equation in a linearized form, d by dt of u. What else do we have? We have a gradient of the fluctuating pomega. Oops, come back in here and write my gradient term. We have the gradient of the fluctuating pomega that contributes to this gradient of pomega fluctuating. 
we have um, a buoyancy term. We have, moving over to the left-hand side, alpha g t 1 in the z hat direction. And then we also have our, um, our viscosity term, minus nu del squared on our u. And our u is fluctuating, um, but let's be careful and let's make sure to note that it's it's one. And we can see that all terms in this equation are order epsilon because they all are subscript one. There's one u1, there's one t1, there's one pomega1, and there's one d by dt. So every single term in this equation is the size of one of our fluctuating variables. Our temperature equation looks like this, d by d t of t1 plus u1 dot grad on t naught, that's our non-constant coefficient t naught of our system, minus chi del squared t1 equals zero. And then our divergence constraint, that one is already in linear form to begin with. There's no non-constant coefficients or non-fluctuating scale quantities in that system. All right, and then lastly, we have our order epsilon terms that are not present in these equations here. Um, so those order epsilon squared terms, those are the non-linear terms in the system, which for linearly small perturbations, so small epsilon perturbations are not important, they may become important if physics causes them to grow to the point where their amplitude is not order epsilon squared anymore. So one of those from the momentum equation, that's u dot grad u. So this is an order epsilon squared term, and that's a, that's a small quantity in this analysis. Um, likewise, we have our u from the temperature equation dot grad t one term, and that's an order order, epsilon squared term. Okay. The resulting set of linear equations um, are these order epsilon equations here, the equations for velocity, for temperature, and for the divergence of velocity. So rewriting these in a slightly um, cleaned up form I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to collect terms in a, in a suggestive way. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to write our linear equations, our linear perturbation equations. So the linear perturbation equations, these are our order epsilon equations. These are the d by d t of u minus, I'm going to collect all the u terms in one spot, uh, the Laplacian of u, so these are our fluctuating u's, and then we have our, um, our temperature term, our buoyancy term, minus alpha g t1 in the z hat direction, and we have our um, gradient of the fluctuating pomega grad of pomega fluctuating all equal to zero. I'm going to write our temperature equation, but I'm going to write it in a very kind of funny way, at least initially. I'm going to write um, the advective part here first. So our temperature equation looks like this. It looks like a, a u1 dot grad on t0. So this is a contraction of our velocity. And we have a uh, like I said, I'm gonna write this a little strange. I'm gonna write our temperature terms over here. D by dt of t1 um, minus chi Laplacian of t1, that's all equal to zero. And then our divergence of u, our continuity equation, divergence of u, that's also equal to zero. I've written it in this form because I've visually collected, I've collected all of our U terms here. They're in this column. 
I have all of our t terms here in this column. And then I have a third column that's our um, fluctuating pomega terms, which don't appear in either the continuity equation or in the buoyancy equation. But here's where they would appear if they did. I've written them in this suggestive form because the system of linear equations, it's linear because every single term has one occurrence of a fluctuating variable. Here, one occurrence of a fluctuating variable, and then here, one occurrence of a fluctuating variable. This linear form, um, that, that suggests us that we should be able to write this in, um, in the form of a x for some vector x equals here zero, because the right hand side here, this vector, this column of information, it's zero for all quantities. So there's a matrix that's applying to a vector. The vector x here, this is a vector of our variables, u1, t1, and pomega1 in the form that I've written the equations up above. Um, and so our, our matrix will take the same form. We're gonna write that matrix right now. This linear algebra form will be a powerful way to consider these equations when we move on to wave analysis. So let's, let's make our linear algebra matrix. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw a matrix here. I'm gonna make it nice and big to try and make it sensible. I'm gonna label, this is gonna be our U1 column. Um, this is gonna be our momentum equation. Um, we're gonna have our temperature equation and we're gonna have our continuity equation. So continuity, momentum, and temperature. So now I'm gonna go down. I'm gonna go back up to this previous form. I'm gonna go up to this written form of our equations, of our linear perturbation equations. I'm gonna fill in the matrix entries with these operators for now. Um, we'll talk later about how to turn operators into algebra. But for right now, I'm gonna write it in an operator form. So the operators in the momentum equation that apply to U1, this is the partial derivative with respect to time, and then minus the viscosity times the Laplacian. This is the operator that we want to apply to U1 to get the relevant form of the terms that actually appear in the momentum equation. Here's our partial derivative with respect to time. Here's our viscosity times the Laplacian of U. Okay, so let's Let's enter in our other matrix entries. So some of these will look a little strange at first. So U contracts with the gradient um, to operate on uh, T0, our non-constant coefficient. And in the continuity equation, our operator is the divergence operator, which contracts on U. Okay. Now let's enter in our other variables. So we have our T1 and we have our omega one columns here. Um, and so in the, in the momentum equation, the contribution of T1 is via the buoyancy term. So if we go up and look up at that, here's our momentum equation. We have a buoyancy term entering into the momentum equation and we have our time derivative and diffusion term entering into the temperature equation. So we'll We'll write these down one by one. So here's, um, here's our buoyancy term minus alpha g in the z hat direction. This is the scalar g where the vector g is equal to minus g times the z hat direction. So let's close our little tail off here to show this is scalar g. Um, our time derivative terms, our, our temperature fluctuating temperature contribution to the temperature equation. These are d by dt, the partial derivative with respect to time, plus or minus um, our thermal diffusion coefficient on our Laplacian of t. And there's no contribution of the temperature fluctuation to the continuity equation. That equation is just the divergence of u equals zero there's no contribution from either T or pomega there. Now our last set of terms to come up with are the pomega contributions to our equations. We see that pomega enters as the, as the gradient 
in the momentum equation and does not appear in either the temperature or in the continuity equations. So we're going to come down here and we're going to write this in operator form. We're going to write this as plus the gradient operating on pomega and no contribution into the temperature equation and no contribution into the, um, it, into the continuity equation. All right, I'm gonna close off my matrix A here. I'm gonna write down my, ma my vector X of variables that this matrix applies to. So this is again, U1, T1, and omega 1. And this whole system is equal to zero. So um, our form here, here is our A, here is our A matrix, the linear operator matrix acting on our vector of system variables here, X. And in this linear perturbation system, A, X equals zero. The right hand side is zero. A, X is equal to zero. Um, we'll discuss in a future video that we can use the properties of the linear matrix A to determine the solutions that are allowed within our system. The, the physics is contained within the matrix A here.